Hello everybody! Welcome to the next episode of our tutorial. Uh, today we're gonna take a look at the second problem set from the Eigensolvers Quantum School. Let's begin. So in the first problem uh, we had these quantum circuits uh, for the first time uh, except for the bonus problem from the uh, first problem set and our um, our goal was to determine what uh, is the final uh, state, right? Uh, what is the final state vector? So let's find out. Uh, in the first example, we have two qubits. Um, qubits are initialized at um, states zero in each of these examples, okay? And these are th th these two ga uh, gates, H and Z, right? Uh, so we would like to find out what um, matrix representation of this whole transformation is, right? Um, because these are two gates, uh, but we can represent the whole transformation uh, done by these two gates uh, as a single matrix. We do that with um, a tensor product. So if we know how to write, um, maybe this way first, Okay, this is the tensor product, and if we know how to write uh, Hadamard gate, uh, what is the re representation of Hadamard gate? Uh, well, it's one, one, one minus one, right? And one over um, uh, square root of two as a normalization factor uh, in front of it. And we know what is uh, Z. Uh, it is uh, one, zero, zero, minus one, right? Then we can just uh, plug this matrix into each of these places, right? And then we will get mm, a new matrix, uh, four by four, which will uh, describe the whole uh, transform quantum transformation, okay? So let's do that. So it's one, zero, zero, minus one. Here is the same, exactly the same. And here we have this minus sign, right? So we have to write minus one, zero, zero, and one, okay? And that's it. And we also want to know uh, what uh, what um, this uh, in initial state um, is how, how this initial state is um, written uh, in this representation right so probably most of you remember uh, what, what what is it uh, but to uh, remind you I can write one zero tensor product one zero and we plug this vector here right uh, so it's one times this so it's just one zero and zero times this uh, so it's, uh, it's just two zeros right so it's one zero 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 and we can apply this here right so let's write it as h tensor product z applied to um, maybe this way to zero zero okay and here we can write this vector and it is of course one over square root of two and we take uh, just the first column, right? Mm. Wait, is it? Uh... Okay, th there is a mistake, of course. Oh, now it is good, right? Uh, one, zero, one, zero. Now it's correct. Yes, so this is our outcome. So that would be nice uh, to know what this vector represents, right? What exactly in terms of this notation uh, of notation in computational basis, uh, it means. Uh, so we can actually uh, write this as some as uh, some tensor product, right? Namely, uh, it's uh, just uh, one one uh, tensor product one zero, right? Because if we plug plug uh, this vector into these two places, we get exactly this one, right? And this one in computational basis is just a plus um, state, right? That um, a Hadamard gate uh, produces uh, exactly uh, in this situation uh, when uh, it is uh, fed by a zero state. So we can write it as, uh, of course, uh, this whole thing is a plus state, right? We need that one over square root of two uh, normalization factor. And this one is just zero. So it is 
plus tensor product zero. That's the outcome. Um, in some kind of short notation, we can also write it as plus zero, right? Uh, similarly as here. In the second example, we have a little bit more complicated um, quantum circuit in which uh, we are supposed to compute the state vector in three uh, moments, in three places, right? Uh, so after uh, applying Hadamard gate to the first vector, uh, then C0 uh, to the first and second vector, and uh, Z times X. Uh, so let's do that. Okay, so uh, we can write this transformation, okay, as Hadamard mm, ten tensor product I, which is identity matrix, which means it does nothing. Uh, and this is, of course, one over square root of two, one, one, one minus one times one, zero, zero, one. So this way we get um, a, a four by four matrix, which we can apply to a two qubit state vector. Okay, uh, so we plug this here and we get one zero zero one one zero zero one one zero zero one, and now uh, this minus sign gives us minus one zero zero minus one. Okay, and we compute the state vector in the first place. Uh, maybe I will uh, write here where are these places, right? This is the first one, okay? This is the second one, and the, and the third one. So we compute the first one, okay? Um, and we apply it to um, 2, 0, 0, right? So we want to compute something like this. Uh, okay, matrix and now one zero zero zero. Uh, so again we take just the first column which is exactly the same actually uh, yeah it's exactly the same uh, in the first example there was Z um, gate right but it does nothing to zero state and that's why mm, it behaves in this very situation uh, exactly as uh, an identity gate, right? Uh, so we get the same, exactly the same uh, answer here, which is plus zero state. And now we can go to the second place. So we have a synod uh, gate uh, over there. And as you probably already know from uh, from the lecture, uh, this gate um, is written in the matrix representation as one one, and here is the not uh, is the x gate, right? So it's uh, zero one zero, and everywhere everywhere else are zeros, right? So. This gate works in the way it applies X gate or not gate, uh, in other words, uh, to the second qubit uh, if and only if uh, there is a state one, uh, one meant in computational basis, right? Uh, this this one. Uh, and if there are zero, it, it doesn't do. Uh, it, it doesn't do anything to, to the second qubit, okay? Uh, and that's why we have this identity matrix here. Uh, so we can apply this, uh, this vector. So let's write uh, this one over square root of two, one, zero, one, zero, right? So now we have to take this column and this column and sum, sum them up, I'm adding them up. And so it's one here. 0, uh, 0, and 1, right, okay. We also want to express it in the terms, in terms of uh, computational basis. So how can we do that? Uh, well, this one means uh, 0, 0, right? 
uh, I mean this state. And this one, the last one, means 1, 1, right? So we can clearly see that uh, it is a bell state, right? So it's 1 over square root of 2 and the sum of these two, right? Okay. Uh, this is in fact, uh, is th this part is the circuit from the bonus problem from PS1, right? Uh, okay, and the third place, well, there uh, we have to apply Z and X. So let's find out uh, first uh, how to write that as a matrix. Mm, okay, so it is uh, 1, 0, 0, minus 1 times uh, 0, 1, 1, 0, right? Uh, and we get 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and 0, minus 1, minus 1, 0. Okay, and now we can apply it to, to this vector. So maybe let's do that here. Um, to, uh, okay, uh, I will write it as phi uh, plus, okay. Uh, because I don't have this per t uh, spare place, but this uh, means uh, this vector, okay? Uh, so now we want to apply it here. So it's 1, 0, 0, 1, and 1 over square root of 2 here. And 1 square root of 2, 1, 0, 0, 1. So we take uh, the first and the last uh, column, and we get... Um, okay, it's uh, 0, 1, minus 1, 0. Oh, it's not visible here um, on the screen, so maybe I will just uh, wipe it out. And, uh, well, it, the outcome of that computation is 1 over square root of 2 uh, and 0, 1, minus 1, 0, okay? So, uh, it can be uh, written as 1 square root of 2. Uh, and these uh, basis elements are uh, 0, 1 and 1, 0, right? So it's uh, 0, 1 minus 1, 0. Yeah, here, of course, if someone of you want to, to, uh, to write it uh, in a full form, it's, of course, 1 over square root of 2 and uh, 0, 0 plus 1, 0, right? because this plus is uh, square 1 over square root of 2, uh, 0 plus 1. Okay. And the third example. And now we uh, want to do that for this circuit. Uh, the process is practically the same as before, right? So. Uh, we just write h times x and we want to find out what is the matrix that we want to apply next to uh, this state vector at the very beginning, right? So first we want to find this uh, state vector here in this place, in this moment of, uh, of the circuit. Okay, so it's 1, 1, 1 minus 1 times uh, 0, 1, 1, 0. And this is okay, and now we apply it to the vector. And we take the first column as before, and we get uh, uh, zero one plus one one, right? That's the outcome. Uh, okay. And in the second place, and now we want this uh, vector um, 
we won't uh, apply Hadamard uh, gate to uh, the second qubit uh, of this vector. So maybe I will just uh, write uh, what is uh, this matrix, uh, matrix of this transformation already, okay? Uh, because we just need to uh, plug Hadamard into once in the identity matrix, right? So it will be uh, 1, 1, 1, minus 1, and 1, 1, 1, minus 1. Everywhere else are zeros, okay? And we take 0, 1, 0, 1. Uh, and here, uh, wait. Here should be 1 over square root of 2 from the Hadamard gate that I, f uh, that I forget about, right? Uh, and also we get this 1 over square root of 2 from this vector. So together they make uh, 1 over 2, right? Okay, and now we take uh, the second and the last column. So it's uh, 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1. Yeah, yeah, we have here um, four ones or minus ones, and that's why we get one over two this time. Uh, before we got only two ones uh, at maximum, and that's why we had one over square root of two. So that's just a uh, normalization factor. Mm. And we can also write this as, um, well, zero, zero, minus zero, one, plus, uh, one zero minus one one, right? I hope it's clear. Uh, we just uh, take uh, the consecutive uh, basis vectors. Uh, and in the third place, we just need to apply CNOT gate, what we did before, right? Uh, so we already know how to do that. Uh, it's one, one, zero, here one, one, and zero, okay? Everywhere, everywhere else are zeros. Okay, and this is 1 over 2, 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1. Um, okay, and now we have 1 in the first row, minus 1 in the second one, um, minus 1 in the third one, and 1 in the last one, right? And this can be written as 0, 0, minus 0, 1, minus 1, 0, N plus one one. That's it. The second problem deals with quantum measurement. So if we have a basis uh, in which we measure a quantum state, and one of uh, these uh, these basis vectors is a, so a is some operator uh, that uh, can be an outcome of our measurement, then probability of obtaining A as our outcome is um, this, um, this term, okay, uh, where phi is the state which we measure in this basis, okay. Uh, and um, maybe I will write that A uh, belongs to some uh, basis, okay. Um, and also, after the measurement, the state collapses. Uh, collapses to state uh, given as uh, wait, phi over the square root of this probability. Okay. And that's enough to uh, answer the questions stated in the second problem. So there, uh, the basis is um, is made of two elements. Uh, so these operators we uh, that we are dealing with um, are density matrices of uh, plus state and minus state. Okay, and we measure um, zero state. So let's compute this probability. Okay, uh, so take this color probability of obtaining, uh, so outcome plus, okay, um, maybe I will write also that our basis uh, is plus and minus. Uh, these are our projective uh, operators, uh, I mean these are operators uh, with which we can do projective measurements. Okay, uh, so this probability equals 
uh, exactly this, but with uh, plus plus uh, instead of a, okay? And we want to measure uh, state zero, okay? So it's plus. And we can write plus as one over square root of two, zero plus one, right? Uh, and uh, similarly here, but here we have brass, not cats, zero. And of course, uh, we know how uh, dot product work, works, right? So uh, this zero with this zero gives us um, one, and with this one gives us zero, right? And similarly here, so it's one over square root of two times one from this uh, multiply uh, for, from this dot product uh, times one square of uh, one over square root of two times one from here. So it is one over two. Um, and we already know that uh, uh, probability of outcome uh, outcome uh, minus uh, is also one over two, right? Because uh, that, that's what we are left with. Uh, but if we quickly uh, compute this, we can uh, also um, uh, we can also see that uh, it gives us the same answer, right? Uh, here we will have uh, a very similar expression, uh, just minus uh, before one um, zero minus one. So here we have one over two square root of two, one, one over two. Yes. Um, and next, we want to find out what are these updated states after uh, the measurement, right? Uh, what is the effect of uh, of the collapse? So uh, we just have to um, use that formula on the right. Um, so the new state after mm, measuring plus, okay, maybe I will uh, write here that uh, after measuring plus, uh, okay, and here it will be after measuring minus. So this state uh, will be plus plus zero. And here we know it's uh, one over two uh, and square root of uh, that. So it's one over square root of two, right? And this is square root of two times. And uh, this will be uh, plus. Uh, and again, here we already know what's uh, the outcome of this uh, dot product. So I will just write it's uh, one over square root of two, mm, and that's it. Uh, I mean, there's one from this dot product between zero and zero, right? Uh, and the outcome is uh, square root over two. All the square root over two is one, so it's plus, right? So the collapsed state is uh, plus. And that makes sense because we measured plus, so after that it's always plus, right? It doesn't change uh, the state after measurement, after the measurement. And similarly here we will get minus, right? From the very same reason. Um, so it's square root of two times minus times one over square root of two as before minus. In the third problem, uh, we want to construct a Hadamard gate uh, using only rotations around y and x axis. Uh, so we want to decompose it into more than one uh, gates. Okay, and uh, here I wrote down uh, these two gates uh, which um, rotate our state on the block sphere uh, around x axis and y axis. Okay. So if we if we have um, a block sphere um, and here, okay. So here we have x axis, okay, y axis, and z axis. 
and this is our sphere. Um, and then uh, this gate uh, rotates um, the sphere around around uh, x axis and this one for, uh, around uh, y axis, right? Um, so uh, how to do that? Uh, well, the first, um, the most brute force uh, way, uh, the, the first that comes to 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 mind uh, is to uh, try uh, to decompose H as some uh, product of these two gates, right? Uh, because as you probably know, H is um, some is also some rotation on the block sphere, so maybe it's a composition of two rotations around two distinct uh, um, axes. Uh, so we can just write this equation with two variables, right? Um, so it would um, involve uh, multiplying these two matrices and then um, writing uh, the exact uh, form of uh, Hadamard gate and we will get some uh, system of equations, right? Of two equations, we have two variables and then we can solve solve that. Um, and it works actually, uh, we can do that, uh, but it, it involves um, much of work, uh, much of uh, calculations. So I want to show you how to do that maybe more uh, in a more smart way um, with vis visualizing what we want to do uh, here on the block sphere. Uh, but maybe it's not a trivial one. So uh, actually, when we um, think about uh, these transformations, uh, these quantum transformations, we can just think what do they do to, to the block sphere, right? So we have zero state here and one state here, and here are uh, plus and minus. And we know that um, this Hadamard gate uh, it actually transforms zero to plus, right? And one to minus, right? So may maybe it's um, rotation around y-axis, right? Rotation around y-axis by uh, minus pi over two uh, by 19 degrees uh, is the uh, does the same, right? But we also know that uh, Hadamard gate also, um, it um, um, transforms minus to one and plus to zero as well, right? It does the same in, in the other way around. So um, if you see that, you already can guess that it must be a rotation, right, around this point the point that lies between uh, i mean not around the point but around the axis that goes through these points right so these points lie uh, in the halfway between zero and plus and minus and one right uh, between uh, in the zx uh, plane so what we can actually do we can try to find find out uh, how to achieve such a rotation by um, by pi by 180 degrees uh, using only rotations uh, around x and y axis right so um, after after trying to, to do that and figuring out how, how these transformations uh, work, uh, we can find out that we can um, rotate it um, around x-axis by 180 degrees, okay, it's uh, pi, and then uh, by pi over two around y-axis, okay? And this way we will achieve this um, rotation and actually zero will go, will go to plus uh, plus will go to zero because first uh, it doesn't change uh, place when we rotate around x and um, rotating by pi over two um, around y um, replaces it to zero 
And similarly for minus and one, it works as well. So we can just write it in the form of matrices, right? So it's R. So it's R x uh, of pi times R y of pi over two, right? And here, uh, notice that. Uh, rotating around x by pi is just an x gate right so it's 0 1 1 0 if we plug pi uh, here it we will get the same uh, and here we have to plug pi over 2 uh, here right and um, so we will get pi over 4 uh, as arguments of these trigonometric fun functions so it will be 1 over square root of 2 uh, minus 1 over square root of 2, 1 over square root of 2, and 1 over square root of 2. So we will get 1, 1 over square root of 2 here, and here it will be uh, 1, uh, 1, 1, and minus 1. And this is in fact a Hadamard grid. So that's the, the composition that we were looking for. And in the last problem, uh, we want to find um, a density matrix using this formula that allows us to do that uh, when we know the position vector of a quantum state on the block sphere, right? So we want to do that for a qubit initialized at zero with an H gate applied on it. So let's go again to our block sphere to visualize what happens there. We start at the North Pole, right, with zero state, and we apply a Hadamard gate to it. So as I said before, it transforms it here to the plus state, right? And that's uh, why the position vector of this state is 1, 0, 0, right? Because it lies on the x-axis and the radius of the block sphere is 1. So uh, the other uh, two coordinates are zeros. And now we can use the formula mentioned, uh, mentioned in the problem. So the density matrix is 1 over 2 i plus uh, r times sigma. And sigma is the vector uh, whose elements are poly matrices, right? 1, 0, 0, 1. Plus one zero zero times, and here we have poly matrices. Okay, so we will get x out of this mm, out of this uh, dot product, right? This will give us x because uh, we multiply it uh, by one and the other ones by zeros. So we get. 1, 0, 0, 1, plus x, which is 0, 1, 1, 0. And we get 1 over 2, 1, 1, 1, 1. That's the density matrix. Now we can go for uh, Kiskit problems. This time, in addition to theoretical problems, there are some uh, programming problems uh, which were intended to introduce you to Qiskit library. Uh, so let's import uh, the necessary stuff here, and we can start with problem one. So the goal of problem one is to implement uh, those circuits um, we dealt with um, in the theoretical part 
in the very beginning, these ones. Uh, so in the first example, we want to apply Hadamard gate to the first qubit and Z gate to the second one. So let's do that. Uh, our circuit here is called circ1, okay? So we have to write circ1 h of 0 and circ1 uh, z of 1. Uh, pay attention to the fact that we um, label our uh, qubits or enumerate uh, starting with 0, right? So uh, the first qubit is labeled with 0 and the second one is labeled with 1, right? Mm, then we want to display mm, the circuit um, this is the comment that does does, does it, and um, later um, evolve the state vector, and it will be displayed as well. Uh, so yeah, that, that's the circuit, and this is the answer that we should obtain uh, in the theoretical part. Uh, I think it is the same, at least I hope. Uh, okay, so the first uh, example, uh, sorry, the, the second example, uh, is uh, Hadamard gate to, to the first qubit, then C0 or um, CX, that's uh, another uh, name for, for this two qubit gate, uh, then Z to the first qubit and X to the second. So let's do that. So circ uh, 2, H of 0, right? Uh, circ 2, uh, CX. First we, need, uh, we write a control qubit and then target qubit. So it's 0, 1 then circ to z0 uh, and circ to uh, x1, right? Uh, this should give us uh, that circuit. And we need to display it. Uh, so display circ to draw MPL. Uh, if we don't write this uh, MPL, then we get um, uh, something that doesn't uh, look uh, as nice as um, above, uh, I can show you. Mm, we get uh, something like this, uh, a simpler form of, uh, of the circuit. Okay, and we can also evolve um, uh, the state vector. Yeah, so that's the answer. And then we can go to the third one which is a uh, Hadamard gate to the first qubit and to the second qubit X uh, Hadamard and then C0. Okay. So circ3, H of 0, uh, X, sorry, circ3, X of 0, of 1, circ3, H of 1, and then uh, CX, 0, 1. Now we need to display it. Circ3, draw, MPL. And we need to evolve uh, the state vector, evolve, uh, Circ3. Okay, yeah. And I even remember that this is exactly the state vector that we got in the third example in uh, in the first theoretical problem, so that's good. Uh, the second problem involves uh, Bell states, which are listed here. So we need to build circuits uh, which uh, produce them, um, and then measure these circuits and plot um, the outcomes on, on a histogram. Okay, so let's do that. So in the first one, uh, we see that uh, we already uh, saw it, um, that it can be produced by applying Hadamard gate and C0, right? Because we get this 0 plus 1 by applying Hadamard gate, and then C0 just um, gives 0 if the control qubit is 0, and 1 if the control qubit is 1, and that's why it produces such a state, mm, right? Uh, so we can just... Uh, build this circuit here. So phi plus, that's the name of our circuit now, and pay attention that here, now, here we have two qubits, uh, we have two qubits in the quantum register, but also two classical bits in the classical register, right? And that's the um, the number after, um, after a comma. So let's apply uh, Hadamard and then CX. 
that should give us uh, the state, uh, the first bell state. Uh, okay, and this is the code that uh, uh, that runs the simulation. Okay, and to plot the histogram, uh, we write uh, plot histogram result uh, get counts buckets and we can also give it a title um, let it be five plus oh by the way we didn't uh, measure mm, qubits so um, yeah uh, we should write here five plus measure zero zero it means that we measure the first qubit uh, and store the information in the first uh, classical bit right which is also um, labeled with zero and then uh, we measure also the second qubit which is labeled with one right uh, yeah and it works um, yeah it should give something uh, around one half and one half right so it does uh, it's good uh, and then phi minus which uh, differs from the first one uh, only by this minus sign um, in the middle, right? So um, we can easily come up with the idea that w we can just uh, start with um, with one um, instead of starting with zero, and then apply Hadamard gate. So it will give us um, the minus state, which is zero minus one, uh, and then we can apply C not as, bef as before, right? So it will it should give this outcome. So let's do that. Mm, okay, so phi minus minus uh, first we need to uh, put uh, an x gate right because we start with zero um, so we need to negate it to get uh, one right and then we can apply Hadamard, Hadamard gate uh, it should give us uh, the minus state and then as before uh, we apply uh, CX gate. So uh, yeah, th that should be um, the circuit that we are looking for. And now we need to measure uh, these qubits. Um, next, we need to uh, simulate it. So we use uh, just the code that we had before. Um, and here it should be of course phi minus uh, and we can plot um, histogram let's change the title as well uh, okay and let's see yeah the uh, the difference is bigger but it's just uh, a random fluctuation uh, but as well it's around one half for each of them uh, we can evaluate it one more time so yeah as you see mm, it's it oscillates uh, around one half for both of these outcomes and we don't have any other outcome uh, like zero one or one zero so it's good of course uh, in this when we measure uh, these qubits we in pl and plot uh, the measurement counts uh, on this histogram we lose some data right i mean we lose this minus sign uh, we can't deduce from this histogram uh, whether it was phi plus or phi minus right so um, th th that's something that is worth uh, noticing uh, okay so let's go to psi plus and psi minus uh, it's uh, very similar but now uh, we have zero one and one zero and then zero one minus one zero so uh, what we can do that uh, do here um, we can of course um, start uh, the same with Hadamard gate we will get this plus state which is zero plus one uh, and then uh, use synod gate to get zero zero pl uh, plus one one but then uh, put an X gate on the second qubit, right? So we will get uh, from this zero, we will get one. And from this one, we will get zero, right? Uh, similarly here, we can uh, get this psi, um, psi minus 
uh, circuit or a state, uh, psi minus uh, state from uh, from this phi minus by applying um, x gate to the second qubit. So I guess uh, we get we can just uh, copy the the whole circuit uh, to to get it faster. Uh, we just need to change these names and here uh, we would like to apply X gate to the second qubit right uh, and that should be enough to get um, the outcome yes and now we, we have this 0 1 and 1 0 and no other outcome so that apparently works and if we um, repeat the this these measurements we see that it stays around one half for each of them uh, of course uh, this one half is probability of obtaining the uh, such a result uh, so now we can go to psi minus and again uh, the only thing that we need to uh, change here or maybe add is this um, x gate uh, to the second qubit right so let's um, let's change each uh, phi to psi and that will be enough yes so we got zero one and one zero okay yes so that should be all for this problem and now for the problem for the third problem I've already pasted this token here uh, so if you have if you still have any troubles with uh, doing that please feel free to ask on discord uh, probably some mentors will gladly help you um, it it must be done uh, via IBM account uh, and then you can access um, these uh, quantum computers uh, which are um, uh, available um, for everyone actually uh, through um, through internet uh, so yeah and I'm I'm not going to do problem three because it can be done with any circuit it just says uh, check what what happens when you run uh, longer and longer circuits um, on actual hardware uh, not on simulator and compare it to simulated uh, outcomes right uh, like these uh, so it's obvious that the more gates the more noise goes into your computation uh, but it's good to, to check it of course to verify it um, but it can be done with any circuit you uh, you, you want um, okay and I will just show you how to um, how to access um, this uh, these computers um, so here uh, you have the list of all these uh, IBM quantum computers uh, the biggest ones like with 27 qubits or 60 or even 65 qubits uh, uh, are not available for everyone as they're locked um, but uh, these five qubit machines or this this one one qubit mm, uh, machine uh, are available uh, and you can easily access them through Jupyter Notebook if you have this token um, so maybe let's take this uh, IBM Q Bellem okay it's a five qubit quantum computer uh, so we need to mm, to uh, just to mm, define our backend as we did it here with the simulator and practically do, do the same but now with uh, this IBM cube bellum uh, so let's define provider get provider um, IB, IBM Q and now backend provider get backend so it's basically the same this line is basically the same as before but now we write not uh, simulator mm, but uh, IBM Q Bellum right uh, that's the name here right it's the same 
one. If you want to choose another computer, you just pick another name. Uh, okay, and now uh, what uh, circuit we want to uh, we want to run? Uh, so maybe this five plus. Okay, the the first one that we did here, and therefore in the second problem. Uh, so result uh, is backend run five plus result brackets. Uh, yeah, and that's all. Uh, maybe we want to plot histogram, of course, right? Get counts. Um, and let's give some title, um, like five plus, five plus uh, run on IBM Q. Uh, oh, sorry, IBM Q. Um, Balan. Okay. The of course, first uh, we need to evaluate this cell with the token. Um, oh, okay. I used this token in another session, but yeah, it works. Uh, and now we can run uh, that circuit on IBM Q Balan. Oh, there is some error. Uh, oh, of course. Uh, so it says uh, what gates uh, it uses, and we need to mm, present our circuit um, using only these gates. Okay, so uh, we need to do some transpiling, I guess. Mm, so maybe here mm, before we uh, give it, it as uh, an input, right? So let phi plus be um, transpile. Plus um, basis gates, I guess. And now we need to uh, give uh, what gates we want to mm, decompose our uh, circuit into, right? So let it be R Z um, uh, S X, and we need, of course, also C X uh, because uh, we use that in our circuit. And that's the only um, two qubit gate. Mm. Okay, and it should work now. Um, we might need to wait uh, a while because uh, you know we are not the only uh, users uh, that use uh, this IBM computer, so probably there is some queue. Okay, and after a few moments, I got this result. Um, we clearly see that uh, it differs uh, from uh, the simulation uh, here. Uh, so uh, this histogram doesn't contain uh, the other two options, 0, 1 and 1, 0, while um, the one presenting uh, outcomes from the real hardware, hardware uh, actually lists them too, right? And they have non-zero probabilities. Um, these probabilities are uh, little, uh, are low to in comparison to these two main uh, results uh, zero zero and one one uh, but still can be obtained right uh, in um, while running uh, this algorithm on uh, on this uh, quantum computer uh, so this these two op these two outcomes can't be obtained uh, through theoretical reasoning right uh, it's not possible to get them because the the state that uh, we are measuring is superposition of zero zero and one one. Uh, but all quantum computers that are used these days um, are noisy, and we still get uh, practically uh, all possibilities or possible um, outcomes. But the correct ones. Um, most often have um, significantly bigger probability of um, uh, of appearing. So that's something that is worth of keeping in mind. Mm, yeah, and that's something that um, is completely differing uh, from from theory or from simulation, from uh, you know that uh, idealized simulation. Uh, yeah, so I think that's. Uh, something cool that we can um, 
run these quantum circuits through internet. And you can do that uh, even after quantum school because these computers are available uh, for everyone. So you can just send the request and get results as, mm, as right now I, I get this result uh, right, right here. Uh, and well, uh, that's all for today. Uh, if you get still some questions or you want to consult your solutions, uh, please feel free to contact with mentors in Discord and just keep in touch, um, whatever your problem is. Um, and see you soon.